Welcome to Off Center's Online Learning, a chance to receive the same high quality course material with one on one instructor feedback in a colorful, convenient package that you can absorb at your own pace, anytime, anywhere. When scheduling or distance gets in the way, Off Center Online is the best answer. All right, so we have our kick in pad number one of Impulse. Okay, so I'm clicking on it there with my mouse. Uh, one thing that you can also do is activate that with your computer keyboard if you want to. Just make sure that your impulse track is armed, all right? And also inside, also inside options, uh, make sure that your computer MIDI keyboard is active, okay? With that check mark there. And, um, if I strike my A key, my A is associated with pad number one, S, D, F, G, H, J, K, all along your home row there, you're gonna have one key that is connected to each of those pads, okay? So that gives you a little bit of uh, ability just to kind of test out your sounds and create kind of a mock drum, uh, drum beat just on the fly with your MIDI keyboard, uh, with your computer keyboard in this particular case. Uh, and this is really useful. Maybe you're on the fly. Maybe you're, um, you know, in a plane on a train. You know, just mobile. You don't have your necessarily your studio gear there, and you just want to have some hands-on control over what your drums are doing. This is really useful just for those particular cases. All right. So A S D F G H J K. Your home row activates each of these pads inside Impulse. So we have our kick drum in here. Now let's grab another piece here because one kick drum's not necessarily gonna do it, all right? So these ones here become a little bit more tricky uh, just because we have to hone in on exactly where the beginning is. And this just takes a little bit of zooming and fine tuning exactly to find the beginning of this particular hi-hat in this case, I believe it is. And what I like to do is place the cursor on the timeline and just hit my spacebar over and over again just to make sure that that uh, hi-hat is actually in the right place there, okay? Now the beginning's good and what I wanna do is uh, highlight the section that I want. So what I can do is hold shift and press my arrow key here as well and just drag it all the way out to the ending, okay? And that just enables me, if I zoom out a little bit, it goes faster, enables me to keep my beginning spot without having to necessarily click and drag it out and maybe lose my space or lose my place, I should say. Now, I've dragged this all the way out to the beginning of my next drum, and again, I'm gonna Command E. Again, I can also just click on the name and move it around slightly, just to create splits on either end, whatever you prefer. And again, I'm gonna click on Impulse, and I'm gonna place my hi-hat into my drum pad here. Okay, so my J key, Every time I strike that, it'll activate my hi-hat. Okay, so we've got our hi-hat in place, we've got a kick. The reason why I put my hi-hat way at the ending here, you're gonna find your own you know, um, conventions, and over time you're gonna maybe find out something that works well for you in terms of drum placement on the pads. But generally speaking, I like to keep my kicks and snares in the first three or four pads, so depending on how many kicks I have or depending on how, snare, how many snares I have, I might use my first two pads for my kicks and my second two pads for my snares. And I like to keep my hi-hats and cymbals and crash elements on the following four pads. Now, if I you know, have just five or six drum samples, then I'll use these two last pads as miscellaneous pads. So maybe there's gonna be you know, a, uh, a melodic sample or um, you know, a vocal sample or something like that. I'll usually keep it far to the right. And uh, again, you know, if you just repeat things over and over again and, and just get used to laying your drums out in a certain way on the pads, uh, you're going to be familiar with it. Every time you open up another kit of yours after we start saving and creating kits of our own, if they're all laid out the same way or um, in a similar way, then you're going to know without thinking about it exactly where your, the drums should be, right? So that's a good kind of habit to get into. So we've got our hi-hat, we've got a kick and a hi-hat. And now, I probably want a snare or something like that. I can select that from this particular clip, or I can grab another clip. Let's see if this is. Okay, that's not bad. And I want to grab that snare up to the point before the hi-hat hits. 
And this beginning part here is going to be really important for me as well, right? So I want to grab it as close to the beginning of this first spike of the waveform as possible. So I'm going to place my cursor here right as it starts dipping. Okay, we're talking about milliseconds here, right? But it's important. I don't want there to be any delay between when my drum hit um, is activated and when it actually plays. So I want to be really close to where the waveform begins. So now I'm going to hit shift and arrow key over. And again, drag that all the way out to before the beginning of my next drum hit. Command E, activate impulse. And again, I'm going to drop my snare here. Okay, so got my hi-hat. Notice how, how that hi-hat has a bit of a clip at the ending. This is where I can start playing around with some of these features inside Impulse. So the decay feature, for instance, the decay will shorten up that sound a little bit and potentially get rid of that extra little clip that I have at the ending. Okay, so that's one of my editing tools down below. As you can see, there are several of them. And the way that they're laid out here is that I have these three as my global controls for my entire impulse kit. And then the rest from this point towards the left. So my volume here is for each clip or each sample independent from each other, okay? So this is an independent volume control for this particular sample, all right? So if I wanna increase or decrease the volume of just this sample, I'll select it and then increase or decrease the volume from here versus these three are the only ones that will control all eight samples.